I'm from the foe. You dig? What up, what up, what up, what up, and what it do? I am Jamari Rashad coming to you with yet another edition of the Forecast Podcast. I'd like to uh, go ahead and thank y'all for all the love y'all showed in my last video. I uh, appreciate any and everybody that uh, shared, liked, comment, anything in between. You are the real MVP. So, the first thing I want to discuss today is the movie that, well, it hasn't came out yet. It's just a trailer so far, but the movie Loquisha. <laughs> the name alone, okay, Loquisha. Uh, it is directed by Jeremy Seville. Uh, in an interview that he did with um, Newsweek, he said that he wanted to, I'm going to quote him so I don't misquote, he said that he wanted to make a funny film that will bring joy and laughter to everyone that's watching it. Well, of course, that didn't happen. Um, the black community wasn't a, a big uproar. Uh, you know how that goes. Everything is an immediate outrage. Everybody finds a reason to be upset with everything. So I want to ask, are we reasonably outraged on this one? Okay, so to give you the rundown on Loquisha, from what I got from the trailer and the uh, overview um, breakdown, uh, Loquisha is about a white man who is looking to break into the radio industry, but he's unable to do so being himself. So he somehow sends in an audition of him uh, posing, pretending to be a black woman uh, named Loquisha. And he eventually becomes very beloved in whatever community that the movie set in. Uh, everybody, he becomes a, a inspirational black woman that, you know, then I, I don't know. I haven't seen it. It isn't out yet, but go check out the trailer. Uh, so there's been a lot of backlash uh, from the black community because um, a lot of people are saying, why is a white man on the big screen portraying a stereotypical black ghetto woman named Loquisha and that's somehow going to be okay. So that's the stance that a lot of people take. Um, I remember I was watching um, or listening to The Breakfast Club and uh, Angela, Angela Yee was saying something along those lines of um, that'll never ever happen. Like how could how could you allow something like that to happen? And uh, I have I have to disagree with that because it's like all right. So this is a movie. There there has to be some kind of spectrum that we look at different stuff and say okay, that's just pure creativity. We we can't just um, put the microscope on everything that we look at. But also I'm not a black woman and I can't tell black women not to be offended. So. You have that. So, we have, all right, we have movies that we, we've we done that pretty much this entire thing has been in reverse. The biggest and the most obvious clearly is White Chicks with the, uh, the Wayans Brothers where they pose to be the two uh, white girls. I haven't seen the movie in, in forever, but they pose, they dress to be uh, two white girls. They acted in stereotypical manners and everything, all that all that good stuff. And, you know, everybody gets a good laugh at that. It's a big cultural movie. There's not too many people that, you, that you'll run into that haven't, if not seen white chicks, um, at least heard of it or know of its existence. And then uh, more recently, there was a movie called um, Black Klansman. I'm not sure if um, if you all have seen that. It's it's not necessarily as as um, on the same scale as White Chicks. It's um, not not that far along. But in Black Klansman, it's uh, set in the um, the 70s, and there is a black cop that moves into a a racist territory, and he wants to infiltrate the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK of that of that um area. So he poses to be one of them and bada boom bada bam. That's how that happens. So okay, that that happens. That's yet another movie, which is okay, which is fine. We we laugh at that. That's just okay. So okay. Dave Chappelle. I know I know y'all have seen Clayton Bigsby. The black white supremacist. 
the, but like, yo, it's fucking hilarious. It is freaking, freaking hilarious. Like, how did, and it's like, that's all right. We have no issue with that at all. So, I hate to, or I ain't gonna say I hate to, it doesn't matter, but again, on the, on the Breakfast Club the other day, when they were discussing this exact topic, Charlemagne the God actually brought up the fact that he believes in, I, I can say that I probably kind of agree with him that it is an, an, un, an unwritten rule that the oppressed can make fun of the oppressor, but it doesn't work the same way. So, um, you know what I'm saying? Black folk can make fun of, of whites and say whatever we want, and they, they just can't do anything back. I remember... um. Patrice O'Neal, rest in peace to him, the late great Patrice O'Neal, had a joke in one of his stand-ups. We was like, yeah, I can just sit up here and just say whatever I want about white people and they just have to take it. And it's just like, all right, that got me thinking. Like, that, that is kind of true. So what do y'all think? Do you do you think it's kind of a an, an unwritten rule that, okay, whether it be Loquisha being unacceptable, white chicks, black clansmen being completely acceptable, is it just an unwritten rule that... We as black people can do that, and y'all can't. And is that a rule? And do you agree with that rule? If so, is that a rule? And how do you feel about that rule? So, mm, on the mm, on the topic of matter of fact, I got something for y'all. Take a look at this. I got something y'all want to see. I hate how much fun black people can have racially, man. It's just. I can say anything I goddamn want racially. And white people have to sit there and take it. You know, I am evil, yes. He's like, come on, man. I, I don't even say it because of that. I, like, I, 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 love, I, I love a little racial. Yes, look, man, you know. I'm from the foe, you dig? Our next topic that I want to discuss, and as I discuss these topics, I, again, I want everybody to please share your comments down below. I'm very interactive. I promise I will more than likely 99.99% of the time respond to your comment or interact with it some way. So please like, comment, share, anything below. Uh, so what I want to talk about next is uh, I've seen, a, again, on the movie trailers, there's been another trailer, but this time for a series. There is a spinoff from the uh, popular show Blackish, which um, stars Anthony Anderson as well as Tracy Ellis Ross as a black family as it explores the, the struggles of the modern day black family. So the spinoff show is called Mixish, and it's going to basically, I guess, do the same thing, but with a biracial family, they're gonna enter, they're gonna, um, basically they're going to look into the struggles, the, the interactions, the, the traumas that biracial children and biracial families grow up with and what they have to face in the world that doesn't see them as being on one side or the other. Just my complete wrap up of that. I mean, that's not in word or anywhere. So, on that trailer, like Twitter has been in a big uproar because in it they show um, three light skinned mixed children in the lunchroom, and there's a dark skinned young man that comes up to them and says, um, I believe, hey freaks, what are y'all mixed with? And it just shows, it uh, pans over to the lunch table and it's other little dark skinned children just laughing and making fun of them. So a lot of people are upset with this because they're saying, okay, there is more dark skinned people in this one little trailer, this one little segment of this new show than there is on the entire show of Blackish. And with that being the case, why is the dark skinned representation being shown as such evil, um, mean people? Why are they being so mean-spirited to the bi biracial people? Why can't they be shown in a positive light? Why can't biracial people be portrayed as, or why couldn't the director, I guess in this case, portray them as finding other struggles? Why does the the why does the bad guy have to be the the dark-skinned person? So with this with this being 
on my mind of me seeing this and I was seeing all these people just going back and forth on Twitter about about their opinions on it. I, I took it, I took the liberty to go to my, my personal Instagram page, which you can find all my information around here somewhere. Uh, yes, your fly this, uh, two S's underscore on Instagram. And I put up a poll and uh, I asked, what exactly did I ask? Uh, I asked, do you feel as though you've ever been directly affected by colorism? And the second question I ask is, do you feel like the term colorism disproportionately supports people of a darker complexion? And the response to those were, 73% uh, of people do say they have indeed experienced colorism, while 27% did say that they have not. And also 70% of the people that voted on the, sec on the second question feel as though darker people are benefited more from the crusaders who come in and, and stop colorism, the, the social justice warriors that focus on, on that issue. It, it's usually to support a, a dark-skinned person. And um, I don't necessarily consider myself to be light-skinned or dark-skinned. I always claim brown skin. I'm you know what I'm saying? Wintertime, I'm lighter. Summertime, I catch a tan. It's not really a thing for me. So if I can say personally, if I have any testimony to being lighter, I can honestly say that growing up and even into the later teenage years, I noticed that individuals on the outside would see me. Okay, back up for a second. I'm pretty much the lightest person on both sides of my family somehow. Like, I'm just like, although I'm not light skinned, I'm the I, I'm I'm in a family full of dark skinned people. So fast forward back to where I was, uh, I noticed a lot of the times I would have a lot of presumed innocence in a lot of situations, whether it be me and my cousins walking around the mall and them being looked at or being followed as or seen and seen as a threat simply because they're they're not just like kind of dark skin they, they they black them black them they, they 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 dark so you know what I'm saying though they've they've I've seen them be be villainized by by even other black people it's not even necessarily just white people and assumed guilt with them just as there could be assumed innocence with me being lighter even though I'm black being light I do feel as though gives people on the outside whether it be white folk black folk or green people it doesn't matter i think they see a lighter complexion and i do come off as a less um intimidating black man as opposed to someone that may be darker so i asked people two separate questions i said if you feel comfortable uh could you share a story about um a struggle you felt being dark-skinned and I also ask the same of those that may have felt it being light skinned because a lot of the times as the, the data in the in the poll suggested, colorism is usually only there to protect dark skinned people and dark skinned women to be to be exact. But um someone asked uh well not asked on the on the dark skin Someone left the comment, I definitely feel like being dark skinned on top of being natural has a different outlook. I can only imagine so, but I can I can definitely sympathize with that. I am black, so I can feel half of it, but I am, I'm not a woman, so I'm, I'm unable to completely understand. But I, I think I think most people can understand where that sister's coming from. Um, another said. She doesn't fit in because she's light skinned and part white. So people pick on her because of the way that she speaks. I can I can completely agree with that. Um most times in the black community, a lot of people demonize those that 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 speak well and accuse them of talking white which is something that I, i've never understood it, it's speaking well it's having the ability to articulate yourself to get your point across to have a, a a profound vocabulary to be able to to reach into your mind and actually pull out words and phrases that 
express your express your express your thoughts your ideologies without being just expressive or or cursing all the time it's it's like it's it's a skill but black people look at it as a negative somehow which is I can I can definitely definitely feel with that one and uh, a third she this is kind of different because uh, I was speaking in terms of pretty much being black and white but she said that she was demonized because she was in a family that felt she wasn't Spanish enough. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't have the exact quotes in front of me, but she was telling me that the entire time that she was with her family, they never treated her the same simply because she didn't seem she couldn't speak spanish it's it's a crazy story i actually i'll actually share the screenshot so you all can read for yourself but as you can see there's a lot of people that have faced colorism struggles um whether you be light skin dark skin anything you always find yourself on a different struggle so again how do y'all feel about the mixed mixed Ish, that's kind of hard to say. Mixed ish show that's uh, coming out. Do you feel as though it's a accurate depiction, or do you feel um, or you know, two things can be true, even if it is an accurate depiction of the life of biracial individuals. Do you feel as though it's unfair the way that they portray the dark skinned black kids in the in the in the trailer? And on top of that, um, how do you feel about colorism? Have you personally ever been? directly affected by it um do you feel as though um colorism or and those that try to fight against it the social justice warriors that are that are out there in the fight for it are there mostly for dark skinned people and the the light skin the, the lighter skinned people are are left on the outside to be forgotten about because there's a there's a unspoken thought that light skinned people are just good so y'all leave y'all comments below uh Again, I appreciate y'all for tuning in, and I have a lot more content coming. Stay interactive, and until next time, it's the Forecast Podcast. I'm Jamario Rashad, and I'm out. You dig?